Hello, Matthews. Gators here. Welcome to Solving Quadratics by Completing the Square. Mm -hmm. Before we get into that, let's review Solving Quadratics by Factoring. So since this is a review question, I would recommend pausing the video, doing the question, and then coming back to see if you're correct. So in this question here, we have 10x squared plus 13x minus 3, and we want to factor that as ax plus b times cx plus d, cx minus d, sorry, and fill in the blanks. So whatever way that you want to factor, you can go ahead and factor it. And it factors as 2x plus 3, 5x minus 1. So I just want to mention how we put the numbers in. So a and c are the numbers in front of x. So a goes with the factor that is adding, which is right here. C goes with the factor that is subtracting, which is here. So that's why a and c are 2 and 5. Now what goes with a is the b value, which I'm adding. So I put in my positive 3 there. And then it says minus d. So because I'm subtracting 1, I only have to put the 1 in there. The negative has already been accounted for by that subtracting. So it's just a positive 1 that goes in there. The second part of this question is finding the exact value solutions. So I set each factor equal to 0 and solve. So I set 2x plus 3 equal to 0. I subtract 3 from both sides and then divide both sides by 2, leaving it as a fraction. I do the same thing for 5x minus 1. Add 1 to both sides and divide both sides by 5, leaving it as a fraction for the exact value. So Again, we're going to be looking at completing the square, solving by completing the square. Since you guys have already done completing the square when a is not equal to 1, we're not going to test you on how to solve when a does not equal 1. So we're just going to stick with solving when a equals 1, which is great news because that makes it a little bit easier. So we use completing the square, solving by completing the square, when a quadratic cannot be factored. Just because a quadratic can't be factored doesn't mean there's no solution. It just means we can't use factoring to get to it. So in 4.3 and 4.4, we're going to show you two ways of solving algebraically a quadratic that cannot be factored. So really important to solving by completing the square is the square root principle. So I just want to review that one first. So the square root principle says if I have a number x squared, equal to a number, so x squared equals to b, then x is equal to the positive and negative root of b. So whenever you take the square root, it is a positive and negative. Now notice that my power was all by itself. It was isolated, and that's my tip for you. The power should be isolated first before you take the square root. Now let's talk about why it's a positive and negative solution. So when I have x squared equals to positive 25, for example, I take the square root of both sides. Because I'm taking the square root, it is the positive and negative root of 25, which is the positive and negative value of 5. Here's why. 5 times 5 is 25, and also negative 5 times negative 5 is also positive 25. So that's why there's two answers. Now, we can't talk about taking the square root of a number without mentioning that you cannot take the square root of a negative number in the real number system. So you can't square root a negative number in the real number system. So when I have something like x squared equals to negative 25, that is not going to have a solution because I can't square root a negative in the real numbers. So let's take this idea of square root principle and just practice a couple examples. So I want to know the values of x that make this true. So in the first example here, I have x squared equals to 9. So since my root is isolated, I can just take the square root of both sides. But remember, when I take the square root myself, I have to remember that my answer is positive and negative. So square root of 9 is 3, so my answer should be plus and minus 3. So I just want to check this question graphically. So x squared equal to 9. I want to know if that has two solutions, positive and negative 3. So putting that into my calculator, I can see that, yes, it does in fact work. I have an intersection. Here is my x squared. Here is my 9. And it intersects at negative 3 and positive 3. So I know I've done that correctly. 
in the first one, or sorry, the second one, my x squared is not isolated. So the first thing I need to do is divide both sides by 4, and I get x squared equals a quarter. So since it's isolated, I can take the square root of both sides to be fair. Now when I take the square root, I need to remember that the answer is positive and negative. So the square root of x squared is x. The square root of 1 over 4, well, I look at it like this. The square root of 1 is 1 over the square root of 4 is 2. So my answer should be positive and negative a half. So let's put this into my calculator. 4x squared on one side, 1 on the other. Let's see if they intersect at positive and negative a half. And you can see, yes, in fact, they do. Okay, and the next one here, my square my squared term is isolated, it's just not a monomial, but the process is still the same. So I have x minus 2 squared equals 3. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So whenever I take the square root, I need to remember it's plus and minus. So square root of 3 can't be simplified further, so I'm going to leave it just as square root 3. And here the square and square root cancel. So to get x by itself, I just add 2 to both sides. So I'm going to have 2 plus or minus root 3. Now this looks a little bit different than anything we've seen before, and I want to show you how this is two solutions. There is one solution, which is 2 plus root 3, and there is another solution that is 2 minus root 3. So two different solutions. So again, let's put this into our calculator. I can do that by putting x minus 2 squared in one y1 and 3 in the other and see if they intersect in that area. And you can see here they intersect at 2 minus root 3 and 2 plus root 3. So I know that that works. So we're going to use this idea of square root principle, isolating your square term, um, having a positive and negative answer with completing the square. Put it all together in one question. Remember your final answer has to have a simplified radical. So just like fractions need to be in lowest terms, radicals need to be in lowest terms as well. So from 10c, something like square root 20 is not simplified because 20 has a perfect square factor of 4. So since 20 can be broken down as 4 times 5, the square root of 20 can be broken down as square root 4 times square root 5. And the square root of 4 is 2, and then I'm left with root 5. So it's a good idea to know your perfect square factors. And if you ever want to look at those on the calculator, here's how you can do it. In y2, sorry, y1, you can put in x squared. And that's going to list all the perfect squares in your table. So in your table, you can see everything in y1 is your perfect squares, and everything in x are your square roots that go with it. So for example, 16 is a perfect square, and the square root of 16 is 4. So you can generate them on the calculator easily to help you simplify. So here's your steps to solve by completing the square. First thing is, just like any solving question we do, we set the equation equal to zero and complete the square. Once we've completed the square, we isolate the square term using reverse order of operations. That means I add and subtract first, multiply and divide second. Then once I've isolated it, I solve using the square root principle. Remember, when you take a root, the answer is positive and negative. And then we state our answer as simplified radicals. And the most important part of any solving question is this check. Always, always check to see if you've done it correctly. So let's try this question here. First thing I want to do is solve by completing the square. So I want to complete the square of x squared plus 10x minus 2. So just like we did before, first term goes here. Take your middle term 10x and divide it into two equal pieces. Then we factor out with GCF. So along here, the GCF is x. And I know here I'm going to take out my leading coefficient, which is positive 5. Do the same thing over here. GCF is x. Take out your leading coefficient, which is positive 5. Now, I like to pause at this moment here and check to see if I'm correct. x times x is x squared. 5 times x is 5x. 
x times positive 5 is 5x. Okay, so I've done that correctly. So what will complete the square is 5 times 5 or 25. So I know that 25 is what completes the square. So let's go ahead and add and subtract 25. So I've got x squared plus 10x minus 2 and then I'm going to add 25 and also subtract 25. The reason I add and subtract 25 is because that's really 0. 25 take away 25 is 0. You can add 0 to anything without changing its value. So let's highlight my perfect square trinomial. Oh, let me try that again. I'm going to highlight my perfect square trinomial here. There we are. Which I know factors as x plus 5 and x plus 5. So let's go ahead and factor that. So I'm just going to rearrange it here. So it's x squared plus 10x. I should have done that in the first place, I guess. Plus 25. And then I have my minus 2 and my minus 25. So that looks a little bit better to me. There's my perfect square trinomial all by itself. So using my grid, I know it factors as x plus 5 times x plus 5 or x plus 5 squared. And then just group your like terms out here, which is negative 27. So now that I've completed the square, I am ready to solve. Okay, so solving this is just like what we practiced using the square root principle. So I want to get my square term, which is the x plus 5 squared, by itself. So I'm going to add 27 to both sides. So that's gone. So I have x plus 5 all squared equals to 0 plus 27. Then I'm going to take the square root of both sides. That's the only way of getting rid of a squared. Now, because I took the square root, I need to remember it's plus or minus. So here's square and square root cancel. And here I'm left with the root of 27. So let's talk about the root of 27 and simplify that. Thinking of all my perfect square factors, I know that 9 goes into it and it's 9 times 3. The square root of 9 is 3. So instead of having square root of 27, I can write it as 3 root 3. So let's do that. Okay, and then we just have to isolate x. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. So I'm going to write my number first, negative 5, and then I'm going to write plus or minus 3 root 3. Now I want you to be clear on how this is two different solutions. So this is really negative 5 plus 3 root 3 or negative 5 minus 3 root 3. So there are in fact two different solutions. So what I want to do now is look at the check. So check to me is the most important part of solving any question. So in my calculator, I put my original equation, which was x squared plus 10x minus 2. Let's actually just bring this down so we have some more room. There we are. Okay, so I'm going to start my solution at, or my table at my first solution, which was negative 5 plus 3 root 3. So when I go into my table setup, I can actually just type it in exactly like that. It's an irrational number as you can see in the table. So when I go into the table, this is just part of the irrational number, but I wanted to make sure it was equal to zero and it is, so I know I did it correctly. Then I can put my second number into my table start, which is right there. Again, it's an irrational number and there it is, or part of it anyway. And you can see that it also equals zero as well. So I know I've done my question correctly. Okay, so for this one here, again, I would recommend pausing the video, try this question on your own, and then come back to see if you did it correctly. So if I want to complete the square, very first thing I need to do is get it set, set the equation equal to zero. That's my first step for any question that I'm solving. Then I'm ready to complete the square. So I'm going to take my first term, which is p squared, and that's going to go there. I'm going to take my middle term of negative 4p and split it into two equal pieces. So now I'm going to factor out the GCF and also the leading coefficient. So in my first column, I have a GCF of p, and then I'll take out my leading coefficient of negative 2. 
in my first row, I have a GCF of P, and then I'll take out my leading coefficient of negative 2. So now to complete the square, I know that it will be negative 2 times negative 2, which is positive 4. So positive 4 will complete the square. So let's go down here and do that. So I've got P squared minus 4P minus 20. So I know that what completes the square is 4. So what I'm going to do is add 4 and also subtract 4. 4 take away 4 is 0. So I can add 0 to any question without changing its value. So let's focus on our perfect square trinomial. So that's p squared minus 4p plus 4. There's my perfect square trinomial, which I know factors as p minus 2 times p minus 2. So let's finish this off. My perfect square trinomial, p minus 2 times p minus 2, or p minus 2 squared, and then group my like terms here. So I have a negative 4 and a negative 20. All together is negative 24. So I can go up here and now solve my completed square. So there is my completed square set to 0, and we're good to solve. So I want to isolate my square term. So I'm going to do that by adding 24 to both sides. And then I get P minus 2 squared equals 24. So now that my square term is isolated, I can take the square root of both sides to be fair. Whenever I take the square root, I know it's going to be positive and negative. So here, squaring and square rooting are inverse operations which cancel each other. And then we need to break down the square root of 24. So you're looking again for those perfect square factors, which I know is 4. So 4 and 6 go into there. So since 24 is 4 times 6, root 24 is root 4 times root 6. And the square root of 4 is 2. So I know that simplifies to be 2 root 6. So let's replace the 24 with 2 root 6. Okay, so now that we've simplified that, to isolate my variable, I just add 2 to both sides. So P equals, write your number first. You don't have to say positive 2. You can if you want to. I'm just going to leave it as 2 plus or minus 2 root 6. Now let's talk about how that is, in fact, two different solutions. So 2 plus 2 root 6 or 2 minus 2 root 6. Those are my two solutions. So now we're going to go to the calculator to check to make sure we did that correctly. So actually, let me just bring that down a little bit so we have some more room. Okay, so in y1 goes my original equation, x squared minus 4x minus 20. And I start my table at my first solution, which is, oh, and it can really be in any order, doesn't matter. So here, there. So this is an irrational solution. I can enter it in exactly like that. You can see here's part of the decimal, but more importantly, it equals to zero. Then I can take my other solution, start my table at that, and I can see, I can enter it in like that. It's also an irrational solution, but it equals zero, so I know I did it correctly. By entering in the exact value, it will equal zero. If I rounded my answer as a decimal, it wouldn't equal zero exactly. So that's why we want to use our exact values. So this is how we complete the square. My question for you is, how does a ghost solve a quadratic equation? Well, quite simply, he completes the scare. So you guys can go ahead and do practice questions one to three and then move on to your textbook questions. I hope this video helped you and I look forward to seeing you for the next one. Next one.